Hello, warm welcome to all of you as we gather together for worship on this Sunday, December 10th, 2023, the second Sunday of Advent. Just a few announcements for you today. A reminder that if you signed up to purchase any of the gift items for the angel tree uh, for children who are less fortunate in our area, those donations are due today. Uh, December 10th. Uh, Social Ministry will be working to organize those and get those sent out. So if you did purchase a gift, please get it to the church by Sunday morning. This will also be the last day that Social Ministry will be collecting monetary donations for Christmas meals for those who are in need. So if you would like to offer uh, anything for that special offering, uh, please be sure to get that in this Sunday as well. For the next two weeks on Thursday evenings, Aaron Curtolo will be offering a special video Bible study at 6.30 p.m., so please come out for that special event. And if you haven't already picked up your 2024 offering envelopes, they are available here at the church. You can get them on any Sunday morning before worship or pick them up during the week at the church office. In two weeks, it will be Christmas Eve. Can you believe it? It's come that fast already. Uh, but we will be having our normal Christmas Eve services at 1.30, 7, and 10 p.m. that day here in person, as well as our normal uh, video offering online. Uh, but because of that, we'll only be offering one service, one in-person service in the morning at 9 a.m. Uh, so if you were planning on coming out for Advent 4 that particular week, uh, just a reminder that there will only be one service at 9 a.m. and then our Christmas Eve services starting at 1.30 in the afternoon. And now let us take a moment and prepare our hearts for worship as we listen to some beautiful prelude music. We begin our worship with our opening confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who opens the heavens and draws near to us with salvation. Amen. God is patient and merciful, desiring all to come to repentance. Trusting this promise of grace, let us confess our sin. 
everlasting God. You love justice and you hate wrongdoing. We confess the fear, greed, and self-centeredness that make us reluctant to work against oppression. We are complicit in systems of exploitation. We choose comfort over courage. We are careless with creation's bounty. Look upon us with mercy. Turn our hearts again to you. Make us glad to do your will and to walk in your ways for the sake of our waiting world. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. God clothes you with garments of salvation and covers you with robes of righteousness. In the tender compassion of Jesus, your sins are forgiven. God's covenant is eternal, and God's blessing rests upon us all. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. During Advent, we wait for the one promised in Scripture. And he will be called mighty God. We wait for the one whose power has no limits and whose strength knows no end. And he will be called mighty God. We wait for the one whose everlasting light can illuminate the darkest night. And he will be called mighty God. We wait for the one whose mercy never ends and whose faithfulness endures forever. And he will be called mighty God. Praise to you, O God, who gives us courage to start again. You fasten righteousness around your waist and baptize with the Holy Spirit's fire. Bless us as we mirror your mighty fire in these simple flames and teach us to mirror your justice in the paths we prepare. We ask that peace abound until none hurt or destroy over all the earth. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Oh, 
sin and held in love. With hearts and hands and voices, we plead, O oh Lord, to see, to see the day of earth's redemption that set your people free. Mountain in Almeida. Prepare, prepare for the coming of the Lord. In the desert, prepare a rock. Every valley shall be lifted high. Mountain in Almeida. Prepare for the coming of the Lord. Our first lesson is a reading from the book of Isaiah. Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join with me in reading responsibly from Psalm 85. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together, Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall prepare for God a pathway. Our second lesson is a reading from Second Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire. And the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But 
in accordance with his promise. We wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Okay, so it's December 10th, two weeks away from Christmas Eve. How many of you are ready for Christmas? Let's go through the Christmas checklist. Finished your Christmas shopping? Check. Finished your wrapping? If you do wrapping, I mean, some folks just do gift cards, no wrapping involved, or they get those bags and just stuff stuff in there. So anyway, check. <clears throat> Decorated the house inside and out. Tree is up and decorated. Oh, could you find a tree this year it, it, if you get a real one? I mean, there was quite a lot of talk this year about the tree shortage, and some people were really irate about it, but, but I digress. Um, stockings hung by the chimney with, cha- with care and everything else. Check. Christmas cards sent out. Check. Baked all those cookies that everyone will complain about when they put on 10 pounds over the holidays. Check. Uh, Made out your grocery list for the big day's dinner. Ham, or maybe turkey, or maybe both. Sweet potatoes, stuffing, or filling. They are different, you know. And maybe you have both. Mashed potatoes, two. Some people have all three. Oh, and don't forget the gravy. Uh, green bean casserole or corn casserole, cranberry sauce or relish, either out of a can or fresh cranberries to make your own. Oh, and rolls or some kind of bread to go with dinner. And, of course, a nice bottle of wine or some sparkling uh, sparkling beverage to make everything festive. And, of course, don't forget the desserts, besides the cookies, that is. Um, pies of all kinds, and maybe a cake or brownies or other goodies. My family in particular likes the chocolate pumpkin cheesecake. Did you get all that? Okay, check. So, if you have all of that done, then there is only one thing more for you to do to be officially ready for Christmas. Preparing your heart. Yeah. You heard me right. Preparing your heart. Probably the most important part of our Christmas preparations. And often the most overlooked. We get so swept up in the rest of the things that we tell ourselves we need to do. That we often forget about preparing our hearts for Christmas. Or we get so overwhelmed by everything that we have an attitude of, bah, humbug, I'm not doing any of that stuff. But what if we spent as much time 
preparing our hearts for Christmas as we do on all of our other preparations. What would that look like? John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, declaring a message from the prophet Isaiah to prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. It sounds like Isaiah and John want us to go out and start a road project, a major highway expansion to create a super highway for God to come to his people. And it is a building project, but not for a super highway, at least not for one that cars can drive on, and not even one that information travels through like the World Wide Web, the information superhighway. No. The highway that Isaiah and John are talking about is one that exists within our hearts. We are a busy people, living busy lives, Children today are more stressed than ever before with a constant barrage of activities that fill up their days. Parents struggle with work, taking care of the kids, and trying to find time for personal interests. We can't seem to slow down. Even when people retire, they tell me that it seems like their days fill up so much that they wonder how they ever got anything done when they worked full time. So the thought of taking time to intentionally work on preparing our hearts seems like it's just not something that we have time to do. Unless we can slot it in for 30 minutes next Wednesday at around 4.30 p.m. after we get home from work and before we have to start dinner so we can get the kids to practice on time. And that's not what John the Baptist, the prophet Isaiah, or God had in mind. In the midst of our busy lives, especially in the midst of the busiest times, we need to focus on our relationship with God. Because God understands our hearts and what they need even better than we do. Now, I know it's not that simple. Even as a pastor, I find it all too easy to neglect the things that I know I should do so I can get done the things that I think are more pressing and urgent. But our quiet time with God should be seen as a priority in our lives, every bit as important as eating and sleeping although I know we neglect those all too often as well. When Martin Luther was especially busy with the things that he had to do, he used to say, I have so much to do that I shall spend the first three hours in prayer. That may sound like something that none of us would ever want to do or even be capable of, but what Martin Luther knew was that time spent in prayer with God was essential for him to put the rest of his life in the right order of priority. Maybe what John the Baptist was getting at in echoing the words of Isaiah was the same thing that Luther knew. Preparing the way of the Lord means making room for God in our lives making time to spend with God, to pray, and to hear what God has to tell us if we're willing to listen. Making the path straight means removing those things that clutter our lives and keeps us from living the life that God has in store for us. So maybe this holiday season, it means a little less decorating, 
so that you can spend time in prayer. Baking one less batch of cookies so you can spend time reading your Bible. Sending less Christmas cards so you can really connect with people and share the love of God with them. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. Amen. And now let us join together in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With hope and expectation, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. Send forth your faithful people with words of promise and forgiveness. Teach your church to be bold in revealing your good news in word and in deed. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Reveal your majesty in mountain peaks, flowing rivers, and blossoming wilderness roads. Heal the earth where it longs for renewal. Bring wholeness to the earth and all its creatures. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Turn the hearts of the nations toward righteousness and peace. Increase cooperation for justice between countries, commonwealths, political parties, and diplomatic leaders. In times of prosperity, direct leaders to be generous for the sake of all. Merciful God, receive our prayer. <clears throat> Comfort your people with tender words of love and healing. Surround all who are grieving, all who know depression or anxiety, or all who feel lonely or forgotten, especially Be a steadfast presence when all else feels uncertain. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Grant holy patience to all who are waiting this season. Give hope to those seeking employment. Bring reassurance to people awaiting new diagnosis or treatments. Protect expectant parents. Watch with those who keep bedside vigil. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the membership of this congregation. This week especially, we lift up before you Chet and Linda Godek, the Wally Gofredo family, the Tracy Golden family, Frank and Suzanne Groller, John and Sandra Groller, Patty Guari, and the Josh Guthrie family. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let us pray for the prison ministry and the inmates and their families and the Northampton, Monroe, and Warren County, and Danbury, Connecticut prisons. Merciful God, receive our prayer. This week we pray for the Congregation of Zion United Church in Broadheadsville and Pastor Ann Malott. Merciful God, receive our prayer. With you, a thousand years is like a day. Bless the memory of the saints from ages past and the anticipation of saints yet to be born. Inspire us to live with faith as we await your new heaven and new earth. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Listen to these in all our prayers, O God of hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share signs of peace with one another. And now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The God of peace bless you. The love of Christ sustain you in hope and the anointing of the Spirit remain upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, keep awake, thanks be to God.